Hello, welcome to Curious Adventures. Today's Curious Adventure is going to involve a little bit of preparation, which I've already done, and we're going to be working nicely and just preparing and making something lovely and beautiful again. So, I have my glass of wine, everything's ready, and all we need now is to get our little gloves on, get our little implements out, and start today's task. So, if you'd like to come through to the kitchen, we'll go from there. Now then, today's task is clearly we're not going to be cooking in the kitchen, although we do have some interesting tools. What we're going to be doing today is working on Sylvie. Now clearly, this is a model of the SV650S, and it's very similar to mine in that it is the pointy version. So, I have the K3 and this is the K4. Now then, the implements that you're going to be using today, first of all, you need a good cookery book. Now, the only one I can find is a Haynes manual. Now, many people say interesting things about Haynes manual. Some refer to them as the Haynes book of lies. I've actually found this one to be quite useful. And, if anything, it's really good. I can use it as a tray and I can eat my dinner off it when I'm working on my motorcycle. Now then, what's really important when you're working on a motorcycle is that you're using the appropriate tools. Now, okay, you can go to Halfords and buy Halfords, cheap sockets and so on. You can go to the various budget stores and you get a sort of socket set for about 5 99 However, I wouldn't recommend this. What I do is I mugged Carol and I beat her up and stole her snap-on socket set. So, I have this one here. I have a very nice snap-on ratchet spanner and Carol has a very nice black eye. Don't you, dear? <laughs> so, I also have a lovely pair of snap-on pliers and a pair of snap-on vice grips. So, as you can see, they're very lovely. They're technically blue point. They're blue, blue point, okay. So they came from the snap-on pliers. Okay, so, but it's all the same sort of quality. And it's lovely. Now, as I said earlier, you should always prepare beforehand. So rather than bring my whole, mo whole motorcycle into the living room, what I've done instead is remove the braking system. Now I'm going to just work on the front brakes today. So I've got both calipers, I've got modified race lines, and I've got my master cylinder and brake lever. And I've got my trusty glass of wine. So, what we're going to do is we're going to work on both of these, as you can see. Nice SV650 calipers made by Tokiko, Tokiko, how would you pronounce it? I don't know. So, there we go. They're Japanese to me. Yeah, so they're okay. They're, they're only two piston calipers and they float on this mechanism here, which means that they're pulled across and they apply the brake through these solid arms here. So they're nice and simple. Now I've got a nice and simple master cylinder up here as well. Not like mine. <laughs> with a nice brake lever. No. Carol's bike has significantly more pistons than um, than most trucks, in fact, and it includes in the engine. I also have a few extra ingredients. So, now, I've got a lovely pot here of anti seize copper grease. You should always use copper grease. It's very good stuff. It has metal particles in the grease that prevent it, the threads from galling. And the way it works is the metal particles build up in the thread fill any small imperfections in the thread material and allow the, the bolts to slide together, reducing friction. I also have some red rubber grease. Now this is very good for uh, cleaning uh, or keeping the seals clean and allowing them to move easily within the caliper. Very good stuff. So, I also have brake and clutch cleaner. This is very good stuff. So, very good stuff indeed. However, this gives me asthma. So, I won't be using this one today. What I'll probably do instead is uh, beat Carol some more and send her outside to spray everything with this for me. Now, I have my trusty maintenance spray. So, I also have a brand new bottle of DOT 4 brake and clutch fluid. Very important that you use the right stuff. If you use the wrong stuff, you risk uh, swelling the seals and causing all sorts of damage. Is that a sealed muscle? 
Pardon? From a sealed bottle. From a sealed bottle, of course. Is this hydroscopic? Yes. Come on, get a sex in. It is a completely sealed control. bottle, as you can see. And underneath here, which I can't open. There we go. You'll find a nice foil lid, just like that, as you can see. Because Carol is correct, this is hydroscopic and the material absorbs moisture, which reduces its effectivity, effectiveness as a braking fluid. Now obviously it works by being under pressure, pushing the pistons, which then push the pads against the disc. Now that generates heat. If it's got water in it, the, it changes the boiling point of the fluid, which can effectively lock your brakes on. Not good. So. And then finally, I have my favourite substance, this is a bottle of ACF 50. Now, because we like to be environmentally friendly, what we've got here is one that you pump to pressurise. This way we're not spreading lots of nasty chemicals into the environment. And just obviously, them. you don't want to be looking at those ones. So, no. Okay. Right. First job I'm going to do is I'm going to take my first caliper and I'm going to start stripping this one down. Now what I have to do first is remove this small split pin here and then remove the pin here which holds the brake pads in. I'm going to take the brake pads out, make sure everything's moving freely, take this all apart, clean clean the pistons, remove them, clean them properly, clean out the inside of the caliper, make sure there's no dirt or corrosion in there, and then make sure it's all lovely and greased and put back together. Having removed the pads, what you can see here, I've taken off Pin, that one there. I've taken the pads out, which I'm using here to prevent the other pistons moving out. And what I've got here is these are the two pistons that activate the brake pads against the disc. Now I need to get these out to clean them. And you can see that there is some corrosion around these two pistons, and that really does need to be cleaned off. Now, what I'm trying to do bring them out gently without causing any damage. Now the easiest way to do that is to actually use the bike's hydraulic systems. So, however, what I've got here is one piston moving and the other one is not moving, which is slightly awkward. So, so anyway, let's give it a squeeze and see what we can do. Right. What we've done now is we've stopped this piston from moving by using this spanner just here, as you can see. And that allows us to operate this one, which is now coming out as we apply pressure through the master cylinder. Now bear in mind, the master cylinder moves a tiny amount. Now these pistons being larger, bigger surface area, that tiny amount of movement up here equates to a tiny amount of movement down here. And that gives us a mechanical advantage. So by moving this small piston, a distance, it's going to be you know, several millimetres, it will move these ones by a fraction of that, increasing our mechanical force. So. And that's an oddity because that one was the one that was moving the freest. And it had popped the seal out. Yes. And uh, that's the primary seal, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, the desk seal and then the bigger seal the further on down. Yeah. Now I'm going to You need to get that out of there. Um, yeah. And it's yeah. now and... Uh, yeah. I need um, a container to put it into. Yeah. Which is why I put the bucket in. Hmm. Now then, what I have here is a bucket for waste fluids and that can go straight in there. And it's not a very nice colour. No. 
Now this dust is extremely poisonous and damaging to the environment, damaging to paintwork, plastics, and it's not a good idea to get it in your skin or in your eyes, things like that. There we go. Lovely. Oh, and there's some nasties coming out of there. That's fine. Now, yes, I've still got a nice big rubber seal in there. And I've got some dirt in there as well. So I'm going to clean that up. And we'll come back to that shortly. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that one's done. What we've got to do now is squeeze the pistons out of this one. Nice and simple. Same method again. Okay. What we're going to do is use power of the master cylinder. Now bear in mind I've got two race lines here, so you're probably thinking, how is that working? I shall explain all shortly. How are we doing here? Oh, And again, take our bucket, just like this. I'm going to drain the fluid into here, just like that. So, how, with one open race line, did I pump those out like that? Well, come on, Jamie, please tell us. Yeah. There we go, just like that. We seal at the end using some aluminium foil as a small seal inside a G clamp. Nice and simple, works a tree. So, cool. Yeah. Now then, we did have to top up the master cylinder a little bit because obviously draining that one did cause a fair bit of fluid to come out. So that's not a problem. We have plenty here. Sealed it back up again so it can't get contaminated with any of the dirt and then just run it through. Nice and simple. Now it's a case of stripping this one down and cleaning it again as well, just like the other one. There we go. Now, with the pistons, obviously this ring of dirt and corrosion and so on needs to be taken off. I use very fine wire wool and that brings them up looking like that. Now there's still a little bit of corrosion on there. Not going, to, not going to get rid of that. Here's the one I prepared earlier. Lovely. <laughs> so I'm going, to, I'm going to clean that off with some wire wool. I'm going to leave that in for everything. Yeah. I've also got this second pin. Now this one wasn't stuck in like the other one was. This one just slid straight out. But it's still some corrosion on there, which you can see there and I'm going to clean that up with some wire wool as well. And then, as I've done with this one, I'm going to coat it with some ACF 50 before I reassemble it. So, that's that. And uh, now I've just got to clean them, clean them all up. Once you've got the seals in place, you then take a little bit more red rubber grease, being careful not to get it inside the bore, just lightly brush some onto the seals inside. Just like that. And there we have one nicely seated dust seal. Just like that. Now, what we're going to do then is take our piston, again, a little bit of red rubber grease, just around that place where it corrodes. Just there, like that. So, now, I've also sprayed the inside of the piston with ACF 50 just to make sure there's no corrosion forming in there and also just around the lip but this red rubber grease will help as well so there we go and that's that and these are now ready for reassembly okay. right next step once you've put the grease on is you're going to slide the piston back into the bore now obviously there's a lot of grease on here you don't need that much on that piston as it goes down, most of that will be wiped off, leaving behind a layer that's only a couple of microns thick. Not very much, but it helps the seal keep dirt out. So, now this should slide in nicely. So, 
So I'm going to stick that one there. And slide that down ever so gently. Just like that. Being careful to keep it nice and parallel. Like that. And as you can see, nice and slow. Slide that in. There we go. Just like that. Now then, what we've got here is we've now got a build up of the grease around there. Now, what you can do, because you're going to put copper slip on there later when you put the pads in, you can just wipe that off. All the red rubber grease is there to do is protect the seal. Just like that. And that is almost ready to go. Now then, Taking your grease gun, you then need to put a blob of grease in there and in there. Now, now I've got to remember which way around these go, because I can't remember now. That's not right. It's got to be that way, isn't it? Like that. Pop that back in there. Now, because of the grease in there, this will be tight. And then you need to pop the seals back on, like that. And this will obviously keep this nice and clean and keep the dirt out. And again, you'll get a little bit of grease coming out, which you can wipe off, just like that. And then you get a tip from Carol, take the anti-vibration plate off, clean it up, and then put some fresh copper grease in there. And just, just a little bit. Yeah, sure just a little bit. So. There we go. Right, and I think I'll go and do that now. Okay. Okay. So let's stop filming. So that's sitting in the calico correctly, just like that. As you can see there. The copper washers that hold your banjos onto your brake calipers air harden over time. And this makes the, so that the seal against the surfaces isn't quite as precise as it could be. So what we're going to do is we're going to soften them. And the easiest way to do that is to use a gas-powered lighter like this one. And this is a particularly high-quality one made by Primus. Hold it in your pipes and you're just going to heat them and you'll see a colour change. So this is, believe, is I, call, I believe, called annealing. Obviously, when you are doing this, the lighter will produce a blue flame and there will be a jet of gas in there. And you want to hold the washer just at the point where the jet of the gas turns into flame. And then you run out of gas. <laughs> there we go. Is that enough? Oh, yeah, that one. And that's called annealing. So, and by softening them up, they will then form a good tight seal with the banjo and the banjo bolt when you put the calipers and the lines back together. And uh, we need some new gas in that one. Mm -hmm. okay. You can stop filming.